the de Broglie wavelength, and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, so we've spent quite a bit of time discussing the wave-particle duality of light. So for instance, we saw that light has wave character when we talked about Young's double slit diffraction experiment. Now, we saw particle behavior in the photoelectric effect experiment and also in the interaction of light with atoms, such as in the Bohr model. Now, what we didn't say is that everything else has wave character as well. Now, large macroscopic objects, such as ourselves or other large objects, we don't observe that wave property, so we don't know that it's there. But it can be observed in atomic sized particles, such as electrons, neutrons, atoms, etc. Now, de Broglie proposed that matter had wave character in addition to particle character, just as light has wave particle duality. So he derived an expression based on Einstein's work to predict the wavelength of matter. And so here, this is what he came up with. So the wavelength of some matter is equal to Planck's constant divided by mass times its velocity. So this is the mass of the particle, velocity of the particle, and Planck's constant, and we get a wavelength in meters. Now, the de Broglie wavelength of a particle is inversely proportional to its momentum. So, electrons have small enough mass to have discernible wave character. Now, this is actually used in electron diffraction, and we can use that to investigate crystal and molecular structure, and also electron microscopes make use of the wave character of electrons in order to investigate the surfaces or the structure of various materials. Now, electrons usually behave more like waves than particles in atoms and molecules. All right, so here's an example calculation. So pause the presentation and give this a try. So we have an electron that's ejected with a velocity of 2.10 times 10 to the fifth meters per second from cesium metal in a photoelectric effect experiment. Determine the wavelength of the electron in picometers. And you have the mass given there. And also remember that one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared over second squared. So we're calculating the de Broglie wavelength. OK, we were given the mass. We were told it was an electron. So we know the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. If we didn't know that and didn't have that in our head or didn't have it right here, we would look on our constant sheet or in the textbook or somewhere for that value. The velocity is here, OK? We're given the velocity. And then we're looking for the wavelength in picometers. So we plug in Planck's constant, plug in the mass of our electron, and then also its velocity. And when we do the math, we get 3.46 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And to convert it to picometers, then we take this value. 1 meter is equal to 1 times 10 to the 12 picometers. That's something you should memorize. And you come up with a wavelength of 3,460 picometers. OK, so the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This comes out of the fact that matter has wave characteristics. And because of this, because of this wave character, precise simultaneous determination of the position of a small particle and its momentum is impossible. So not just improbable, not just maybe, not just really hard. It's impossible. And so this uncertainty so that's delta x is not change in. It's uncertainty in x multiplied by uncertainty in momentum is always greater than or equal to Planck's constant divided by 4 pi. So again, this is the uncertainty in position. And this is the uncertainty in momentum. P stands for momentum. OK, so this is the central concept in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If we know the position of a small particle 
really well, so we know it's in a really narrow range of possibilities, or that uncertainty in x is really small, then the momentum of the particle at the time you measure it cannot be known precisely. So that means that the uncertainty in momentum is going to be really, really big. And the reverse is also true. If you really know the momentum, so you have a very narrow range of possibilities for the momentum, you're not going to know where in the heck that particle is. So stated another way, if we know where an electron is going, so that's the momentum, we cannot know where it is. And if we know where an electron is, then we can't know where it's going. This is where we come back to Bohr orbits violating the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So if electrons were to actually travel in orbits around the nucleus, then we would be able to know where it is and where it's going. We would know the path of the electron. However, the electron has wave character, and it's this wave character of electrons that makes this impossible. So we cannot do that. We, and that means electrons do not follow paths around the nucleus. We would know both where it is and where it's going, and that is not possible. Okay, so let's use the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in a calculation. Now, this problem tells us that the position of an electron is known to be within 5.1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Okay, so that's the little range that the electron can be in. Now, we want to figure out its minimum uncertainty in the momentum. So pause the presentation and give it a try. Okay, so let's use the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. We'll use that equation. And we're going to solve for uncertainty in momentum. Okay, because that's what we need. We have the uncertainty in position. So we're just going to divide out uncertainty in position. Okay, divide on both sides. And so just rearranging and it ends up over on this side. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and plug everything in. So plug in Planck's constant, 4 pi, a constant, and then plug in our uncertainty in the position. And when we run the numbers, we're going to end up with 1.03 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms meters over seconds squared. And that is the uncertainty and momentum associated with this situation. Okay, so additional example de Broglie wavelength and Heisenberg uncertainty calculation videos are posted separately. So look around for those.